studio in the outskirts of Los Angeles. This is the Mindless Horror Podcast. And here are your hosts, Anthony and George Zaragoza. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Mindless Horror Podcast, the podcast where we talk about everything and anything horror. I'm your host, Anthony, and today, he's back. Well, who's back? You are back. Mr. Oh, George back. Zaragoza is back with us I'm in the back. studio. It's been a while, bro. It's been about three, four, five weeks. Yeah, it's been a good good minute. You've uh, missed so much while you were gone. Yeah. TLAV was here. I know. I didn't even get to meet him, man. And I, <laughs> I'm just really mad about that because I was, like, super into TLAV. And then you're like, oh, we're going to have him over, and I couldn't come over. <laughs> TLAV was here. Aqua Arsic was here. Mm-hmm. That was a good one, too. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's alright though uh, I've texted them um, Hopefully we can get them on next week's podcast Yeah. If not, uh, set something up for a future podcast Yeah But uh, If you go on the channel now What channel? Uh, my second channel, Anthony Zaragoza We have a new podcast up I'm not going to say this person Because I don't know if maybe For some reason last minute he can't come on Okay. But I will say that we started a new podcast Called the Nerd Fanbase Podcast It's up now so go check that out after you're done with this podcast because we're going on a little podcast mania now. Mm-hmm. Over there we talk about uh, anything nerd related, geek related, or just anything in general. Uh, yeah. This week we talked about Infinity War big time. Yeah, we did. So hope you guys. As en- of this recording, we haven't seen it, so we're not going to spoil anything in there. Yeah. Um, in, uh, in this podcast. But, but that next podcast, there's going to be some heavy spoilers. Yeah. So, well, uh, that's not what this podcast is about. It's not. We're going to talk about horror. Yeah, it's been a while since we've done about. it. Uh, first and foremost, we're gonna do a couple shout outs like we do every week, or when we get a chance to do a podcast at least. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first shout out is gonna go to my second channel. Uh, if you guys haven't already, go subscribe for uh, new original content. I'm gonna put pretty much on that channel is gonna be everything uh, vlogs, theme parks, uh, geeky related stuff. The first official video I can say uh, is up right now, and it is me reacting to the Venom trailer. Oh, are you gonna, are we gonna vlog? Uh, let's say hypothetically we go to Halloween Horror Nights and you vlog. Would you put it up on Nights of Horror on that? I would put it up on Nights of Horror more because it's horror related. Okay. But uh, but yeah. if we were to go to like Monster Palooza or Comic Con, Monster Palooza would be Nights, Nights of, of Horror. horror. Comic Con would probably be more on the line of Anthony Zaragoza. Okay. But uh, yeah, go over subscribe right now. I would really appreciate you guys if you guys did that. You don't have to though. Um, if you like horror, I can see that. So. This is the place to be. And the last audi- uh, last shout-out, should I say, is to the audience. Because without you guys, uh, none of us would be here right now. So we thank you very much. Moving on, we're going to go on to the, our first topic. Uh, CinemaCon, dude. So yeah, much. I've never heard of CinemaCon before. And they, like, released a lot of stuff. A lot. Um, anything from the new Ant-Man and Wasp. Uh, I think they released a new trailer, trailer or some yeah. footage. Um some they they showed the first five minutes of Jurassic World. Oh, did they really? I yeah. didn't know that. They screened the first form, but the thing that got me the most, um, there's a couple things we're gonna talk about uh, as far as this goes. But I think the one that topped me up the most, we're gonna start it off with, was they screened the first Halloween trailer. Yeah, they did. Yep. And the poster, they released the poster. They released the poster uh, about a week before that happened. Um, Jason Blum goes out on Twitter said he's seen the movie at least thirty three or four times. <gasps> Uh, early screenings. I, I think because as they progress more with uh, editing, he gets to see cuts of the movie until the final cut. Mm-hmm. Um, I know someone actually went on Twitter on a on a on a rampage saying that there was early screenings of the movie and that they all got really negative reviews. And then John Carpenter came out immediately like, "No, nah, dude, we haven't yeah. screened the movie at all, dude. You don't even know what you're talking about. No one's seen the movie yet except for Jason Blum and the editors and stuff like that. Yeah. So shut your mouth." Which I really respect the hell out of John Carpenter yeah. for doing that, because... Uh, At least he shut down rumors real quickly. Yeah, um, but they screened the, the trailer. It was cool for the setup, because they, they screened it, and they brought out Jamie Lee Curtis. She set it up. Um, from what I've read, as far as the description of the trailer, it looks like she's going to be playing almost like a role of uh, Dr. Loomis in here. Okay. Uh, it's supposed to be, of course, 40 years after the original Halloween. Uh, so apparently in this one, after he got shot, they're making it like... They're, gonna, they're, like, they're scraping two out they're making it like they caught him and threw him back in the asylum again uh kept him locked there for 40 years in this movie it's halloween night again uh laurie's daughter and her granddaughter uh oh she, yeah they live with i think laurie or they're visiting laurie or something and laurie's on like full like 
like watch mode like she's just kind of you know paranoid and cautious oh, okay. of everything so she i heard she's like a new ba like a, some kind of new badass oh where like she's just ready to if michael myers comes back she's ready yeah i yeah you i remember we talked about this like i think on one of the first uh episodes how she was at the gun range filming. yeah 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 that's right she was at the gun range uh filming some gun scenes I yeah guess. Or, or, or she was just practicing shooting i don't know but um Dude, I'm excited for this movie. Yeah, I am too. I was kind of mad that... Well, I get mad whenever any, like, uh, like Comic-Con or CinemaCon or even, like... Uh, they get trailers and we don't. Yeah. yeah. Like, it kind of makes me mad because I saw it, like, on Bloody Disgusting, like, new Halloween trailer and I almost fucking, like, almost flipped my lid. And, I, I did find it funny how some guy actually came out and said, the Halloween trailer is going to be up later on tonight. Never came up. Yeah. Uh, and then, I, actual, I think, an actual guy who's working on the movie said... Uh, the trailer is going to come out in a couple months. People got really mad at that. He goes, oh, well, it might come out a little bit sooner than we expected. And then, so it was kind of <laughs> funny. Um, yeah, so that that should be pretty cool. Another thing they showed at CinemaCon, which I thought was pretty interesting, was a new glass promo in image. Yeah. It showed all three of them yeah. um, from Split to uh, uh, Samuel Jackson and Bruce Willis. Yeah, uh, James McAvoy. James McAvoy, yeah. So, uh, and they all have their own colors yeah. as far. So I thought that was really cool. That should be pretty good. We haven't gotten no trailers yet yet. I think they just finished filming. Yeah. So they're not going to – I think they're in the editing phase. But uh, that image does give us a little hyped for what's to come. Um, and then one of the last things I want to talk about is they, they, they screened some Predator footage. Did they? Yeah. Oh, I like I like. Uh, and the there, director. There is a synopsis out for the movie now. Oh, really? I, I, let me see if I can pull it up. But, uh, yeah, apparently they screamed some – they screamed – they screened some footage, and uh, a lot of people are hyped about it now. Really? Because I remember for a while, well, it was just rumors that uh, while uh, I think they test screened it, I, they delayed Predator uh, a good while, too. Yeah, I think it's coming out in, like, September now. Yeah, it? It was, I think it was supposed to come out maybe late ne uh, last year. Yeah. I'm not sure, or early this year. But I remember hearing some stuff that people were, were saying uh, it wasn't good, and they did a lot of reshoots on it. But, yeah. Uh, again, you can only uh, say so much when no one's seen a trailer or a movie. So this is the full 100% official synopsis from Fox. It says, From the outer reaches of space to a small town street in suburbia, the hunt comes home in Shane Black's explosive reinvention of the Predator series. Now that the universe's most lethal, lethal hunters are stronger, uh, smarter, and deadlier, uh, than ever before, having genetically upgraded themselves with DNA from other species. When a young boy accidentally triggers their return to Earth, only a, a ragtag crew of ex-soldiers and a disgruntled science teacher can prevent the end of the human race. Oh, I remember reading some stuff that um, it was rumored that uh, two predators, because there's set images of uh, two predators on a tank and they're wearing like camouflage okay. with uh, the soldiers. And... Um, I heard some rumors that they were uh, refugees from the Predator planet, and they were hiding out, and they went to the government, or, like, the government found them, and he, they were, like... Working with them, or...? Yeah, they were, like, if you keep us safe, we'll tell you everything about them, and, like, they kept them safe, and I think the Predators are there to hunt the, them. I, I really enjoyed the last Predator movie. It was good. Yeah, I love that movie. Um, and I'm hoping this one's good. Shane Black's doing it. I don't yeah. know. What has he done? He did the nice guys. He did Iron Man three. Oh, okay. So he's um, done movies. I've... Yeah, he's done a really. Uh, my, yeah. So yeah, this is going to be his first take on like a sci fi kind of movie, then, huh? I mean, I guess uh, you could yeah. say Iron Man three is, but it's more comic book. Yeah. This is like more sci fi alien sci -fi. kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, they saw footage of that, and I apparently got really good. Shane uh, Black was actually in the original Predator movie. He was the one first one. Yeah. He was like an actor. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, Shane Black is. Uh, he's, he's been around for. A good I wonder if. Uh, I wonder if Arnold. I think will make... he helped write the first Predator. I wonder if Arnold will make a cameo. That'd be cool. We haven't yeah. seen Arnold in a cameo in Predator for so long, and he's like. Well, um, what's his name supposed to cameo? Uh, Gary Busey's son, because Gary Busey's in Predator Two, and in the in the new Predator movie, he's supposed to be playing his son as well. Oh, okay. Because he dies in Predator Two. That's cool then. That that's kind of a little cool. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I don't. Yeah. I... It's gonna be a while till it comes out though. So. Yeah, sadly. September. Um. All right. I'm gonna move on uh, to the next topic because I'm a little excited for this next topic. Um, Stranger Things season three started filming. Yes, it did. Um, and with so th this kind of gives an opportunity for Horror Nights this year because we did find out that Horror Nights Hollywood, Orlando, and Singapore are doing a Stranger Things maze. Yes. Um, so this is a good opportunity for them to also advertise the new season. Yeah, and. Um we were. Uh, I think the Stranger Things maze is. You told me this that it's only gonna be season one. 
Orlando announced it's only going to be season one. Hollywood hasn't really touched up on it yet. Okay. Uh, Hollywood did announce, though, they are doing it in a soundstage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm curious to see what seasons we're doing, only because, like, I'm, I, I want to know. You know. I would. Just... I'm all for um, just one season just because I would want them to do, um, like, I would want, like, them to have Stranger Things again, but season yeah. two. Like, what they're doing with American Horror Story. Yeah, um... I'm curious as to what the facade's going to be for that maze. Probably the school. I would like it to be the upside down version of the school. Unless it's, if it's on a soundstage, I wonder if they're going to do the... Like how they did with AVP. And yeah, they just in. put a poster. Yeah, and then, well, you know what soundstage is going to be at, right? It's going to be in the back lot, right? No, soundstage 29. That's right uh, in back of the Transformers. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, it's a more newer soundstage, and Murdy said that a lot of people it's been kind of empty okay so this is going to be one that they can actually use um i do like the fact that it's going to be in a soundstage because that gives them an availability to control weather i yeah yeah there's a podcast i was on like a week or two ago with socal Mm -hmm. exploring and we talked about this like we went into detail of what we think would be the best of everything and stuff like that um and i made a video on uh the new scare zone stuff but um, yeah, I, I think it's going to be an awesome maze. I, I'm really excited for uh, Season 3 mm-hmm. um, because Season 3 hopefully answers more questions about uh, Eleven's relatives. Yeah. Uh, that, And then we talked about Uma Thurman and Ethan Hawke's daughters. Yeah, she's it. supposed to be another series regular this season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did, however, last season dig the character Max, Mad Max. Yeah, I did too. She was pretty cool. Um, I liked the story of where it was going. It actually set it up like that big uh, monster that they fought at the end, uh, yeah. still alive. Yeah, the mind. That's cool. Um, I still don't believe 100% that Will's okay. I think he's going to be traumatized for that for a while. <laughs> I think all of them are. I would say Will the most, though, because he's got... Yeah, he had a... Yeah. Monster in his head. I could see that. I think we'll see more of the relation between uh, the you know the officer and, and Eleven. Mm-hmm. Because now at the end of the season, he got custody of her. Legally. Yeah, her name. Yeah, he uh, got her full name and everything. Yeah. And then I remember when that came out, he said that he didn't want his character becoming a dad character. Oh, really? Yeah. He oh. said he didn't want that. Um, I think it should be cool. I mean, who knows? Um, we'll see. Yeah. Only time will tell. Yep. So, uh, this entire time when we were talking, I was actually trying to look for some bad horror movie acting. Oh. Um, Did you find any? No. Nice. <laughs> but I'm still, I'm still looking. Yeah, we'll do yours first because I'm okay. still kind of looking for yours. We'll flip it to this this episode. Uh, I haven't found the video. I know what it is because I was watching, uh, as of this recording, um, Dead Meat put up their Saw yeah, put up his uh, James A. Jennings put up his uh, Saw Two kill count, and yeah. I watched uh, the first ten minutes, and I completely forgot how Corey Saw is. And I watched, uh, I watched um, one of the characters put his eye on a doorknob and or on a, a like a door hole, and get shot in the face with the magnum. Yeah, that was like Saw Two, wasn't it? Yeah. So that is going to be my horror movie. Uh, uh, death because nothing like getting shot in the face, you know. I'm about to end it. So that was your horror movie death of the week. I, f- I found my horror movie acting, by the way, while we watched that. Uh huh. Nice. So that's coming up. Uh, it's kind of a. It's a throwback because we were talking about Halloween, so it's Halloween related. So okay, uh, moving on. <sighs> this one crushed me last week. Oh, I know what you're gonna talk about. Ash vs. Evil Dead sadly got canceled. Uh, to crush our hearts even more, Bruce Campbell came out and said he's retired as Ash. Yeah, that one sucked. Um, they they were they were talking from the beginning of season three <clears throat> that this show may be getting canceled this year. Um. And they actually kind of filmed this season in a way where if it does get canceled, then the season or the series finale, should I say, uh, could be the end and that's it. Uh, They did have plans for season four if it did get renewed. Um, 
And I guess season four would have been more of a post-apocalyptic kind of thing. Oh. Because, uh, do you care if I talk about it real quick? Or uh, wait? Can we wait? Cause we I can really wait, want, yeah. I want to binge watch it. Um, but you know uh, they they you know they're going through a bunch of shit this season and uh, so they had plans for a post apocalyptic season four. Uh, sadly, we will never get to see that. Um, I did, however, read an article of how Ash versus Evil Dead can continue on without Ash. Uh, they kind of did that in Evil Dead the remake, how they kind of basically made an Ash, you know, chick as the badass. Yeah. Um, and they kind of switch characters without people almost not really realizing it. They just kind of thought, well, this is a new take on Evil Dead, and it's a more horror like it was meant to be back in the you know you know early seventies uh, or late late seventies should I say. Um, and I'm I'm kind of cool if they were to do that. Um, I I did want to see more of that storyline of the chick Ash mm-hmm. um, because at the end she does cut off her hand. Yes. So they did set that kind of up like if they were gonna do a sequel. Uh, I want to see more of maybe her storyline. Should be good, but uh, you know, like I, I've said this many, many times on the podcast, um, Bruce Campbell is by far probably one of the chillest guys you can ever meet. I've never yeah. met him personally, but from the stuff I've heard and from the stuff I see and stuff, he just looks like a down to earth guy. Uh, it's gonna be sad to see him go as Ash. Doesn't mean he's. I don't know if he's. It doesn't mean he's done from acting forever. I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm very much hoping that in the new Sky High, if we ever do get that movie, yeah. he comes back as Boomer, <laughs> Coach Boomer. He was great in that. But um, I just want to go out there and give a big thank you to 30-plus uh, years of Ash and Evil Dead uh, with Bruce Campbell because I, I, I have to say this right now, without Bruce Campbell playing Ash, that I don't think no one else can play that role, basically. Yeah. He, like, fucking did something to that role where it's just, it's it's phenomenal, it's perfect. Uh, he brought the comedy to it, he brought the badassery to it, um, and you'll never see an anti-hero like that again. Yeah. You know, it's like, it, it's just, it's it's so badass, and uh, Bruce Campbell's one of a kind. There's never going to be another Bruce Campbell um, yeah. and stuff like that, so. Thank you, Bruce Campbell. Thank you, Sam Ramy, for uh, Evil Dead, the series. Um, we are sad to see it go, but uh, it's... It'll never be forgotten. Mm-hmm. Never. Uh, moving on. Uh, a movie that we both saw and liked that our uh, favorite little uh, actor, John Krasinski, made. Yeah. A Quiet Place is getting a sequel. Yeah. They announced that at CinemaCon because of its uh, success. They didn't think it was going to do as good as it did. Mm-hmm. I think it was on like a $5 million budget or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And it made like $100 million back. Yeah. So that's good. Um. And they already had talked about that they did have plans for sequels if it did good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know what? Because I am curious. Uh, they only did kill one of the aliens. Mm-hmm. At the end of the movie, we do see that two of the other aliens were going to come and then just end. Yeah, they uh, – oh, spoilers too. Yeah, I mean the uh, movie's been out for like two months now. Yeah. You, I hope you guys saw it by now. Um, there's a uh, – I really like the ending for it because it gives you enough hope that like they killed one – they can kill the others, but yeah. there's also two. So it, it leaves it open-ended like they could, but they couldn't. Yeah. And uh, if they do a Quiet Place sequel, I wouldn't want it on... Emily Blunt? Yeah. I don't want it on her character just because I feel like they somewhat wrapped up the story, but I would like... To see, like, another part of the world? Of yeah, I just would, don't yeah. want it to turn into, like, an action movie, like, oh, we could kill them now. Let's, like, eradicate the alien race, you know? Um... What got me curious in this movie, and it's one of those movies where you really got to pay attention because there's a couple of things that throw out there from anywhere from John Krasinski's notes in the movie to uh, uh, there's there's a, there's a thing in the movie where when every every night before everything went down, he goes on the water tower and lights a fire. Yeah. And then you see fires there. I want to see those people. Like, yeah. What is that? Were they other survivors, and that's how they keep in contact every night? Because on the final night when they tried doing that, the kids, no there's- one else lit their fire. You're assuming they're dead or they, they left or something, but um, I just want to know who those people were. Um, were they keeping in contact with them? Were they sharing their resources? You know, Were they all trying to kind of survive together to keep the Earth populated? You know, I, Also, I want to know how many aliens are there. There were just three in their town. We don't know if there's more in the world, you know, and uh, I'm just curious to see what's going on in the, the, you know, like in maybe Los Angeles, New York, uh, you know, Orlando, you know, other places in the world. I'm just curious because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things that this 
uh, movie le- there's a lot of questions this movie leaves you with you know yeah um we know how to kill them but um if they do make a sequel and it's about other people are we gonna hear like a a message from emily blunt over like a com or something saying like this is how you kill them um and this is how we did it and it worked yeah um I, I now that i think about it i could see like a walking dead type of situation where it's like uh new alexandria and like people are in a town they build up barriers and yeah um i'm also curious because uh they also did come out and say that uh this was uh there was talks that this was almost going to be put in the uh cloverfield universe i think it was rumored but no there was actual talks was of, it like, really of like oh. not john oh, yeah, Krasinski, yeah but the other writers they're like there was talks that we possibly wanted to connect it to the cloverfield universe but we just didn't which i'm kind of glad they did because everybody yeah. Everybody these days are speculating that everything Abrams does now is a Cloverfield movie. Yeah. And it's like, are you telling me Mission Impossible is going to be a potential Cloverfield movie? Yeah. Or it's like, you know, but uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of glad it kind of separated itself from Cloverfield. And yeah, me too. it did its own thing, which I enjoyed a lot. Um, but only time will tell as far as um, A Quiet Place. They have come out in CinemaCon and they confirmed that they're getting a sequel. So I hope it's a sequel's not ass. <laughs> Uh, if John Krasinski writes it again, though, it should be good. So we're going to move on to my bad horror movie acting. Um, there's this scene in Halloween where Laurie and her friend are walking home. And they see Michael Myers in the bush, and then he walks away. Mm-hmm. And then her friend kind of, like, goes and, and goes and be a, a smartass and shit. And, like, oh, there's no one. Someone's here to see you. It's just the way she delivers those lines, though, are just horrible. Here's what I'm talking about. Look where? Behind the bush. I don't see anything. Can you drove by so fast that one you yelled at? Oh, subtle, isn't he? Hey, creep. Lori, dear. He wants to talk to you. He wants to take you out tonight. I just, I don't like that. For me, I've always thought she was, there's a, I try to find another scene. I'll probably use it next week. Um, the scene where she yells at him when he's in the car and he stops. <laughs> like, that's so horrible too. But uh, moving on, we're going to go to uh, topic five. This kind of, in a way, pissed me off. But uh, who knows with Abrams. Overlord is apparently not Cloverfield 4, and Abrams says a proper Cloverfield sequel is in the works. I don't believe J.J. Abrams. I We talked about this last night. J.J. Abrams is known for... He's known for lying. Like, <clears throat> spoilers are lost if you haven't seen a fucking 10-year-old show. Like, at com- like uh, I think it was at Comic-Con, like, a couple years before the ending, someone was like, are they in purgatory? And he's like, no, they're not in purgatory. And, like, the final season, they're in purgatory. Like... And then, especially with Khan, with uh, when Benedict Cumberbatch in uh, Star Trek Into Darkness, everyone's like, is he Khan? And J.J. Hammers was like, no, he's not Khan. And in the movie, he's, he's Khan. Khan. <laughs> and, like, you can't trust the guy, dude. Like, he's, like, he's a he's a liar. I think that's what the secrecy about it is, though. Like, he can say one thing to distract you, like, oh, okay, well, that's been debunked by the actual guy who's creating it. And then when it comes out, it's like, boom, I was lying. Yeah. It's like, uh... I mean, we kind of already see through the bullshit now. Yeah. Um, I I am a little curious though because they have said that this movie is about World War Two uh, soldiers fighting a bunker with a, a, a decapitated head in it and it's talking. Yeah. So that kind of gets me wondering, like, okay, well, boom, Futurama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. They have been saying though, like, I mean, we've even we even on some podcasts even talked about it. There was like three, four weeks in a row. We were just talking about Cloverfield. Yeah, and it's we've awesome. talked. We've we've broke down uh, Overlord, Paradox, a lot of um, stuff. And we and they've even said like Overlord is just is the fourth Cloverfield movie. They've constantly been saying it. Yeah. And now all of a sudden Abram comes out and goes, "No, it's not." Maybe it was supposed to be, but he found he saw the backlash with the Paradox or Cloverfield Paradox, and he's like, "Hey, it's not." But what do you mean? Knows? What do you mean the backlash? Like, because it, it was so. Because it was mixed. Like, people liked it, and people were like, "This movie's ass." Because I can't give a reason. <laughs> I don't know. It's because they have a thing where they want to just drop a trailer, and then all of a sudden, oh, here's the movie. <laughs> it's like they they kind of in a way did that with Ten Cloverfield Lane. They dropped the trailer out of nowhere in a movie yeah. theater, 
and then like a month later it came out. Yeah, I think it came out on the same day. Uh, Fan Fantastic, the the that trailer came out. Yeah. And I was like, dude, this is a Cloverfield sequel. Yeah, and I found out about the Cloverfield movie because someone bootlegged it and put it on the thing, like, oh, the new Cloverfield movie. And I watched the bootleg version, and then later on, the actual trailer came out. Oh. So it was like, really? Like, you don't even... The thing is, like, I know these movies are just like a Marvel movie with the secret scene and everything. Yeah. But, I mean, you got to do some promotion. Look, at, I mean, look at Infinity War. They released, like, at least the first, a couple, like, five minutes total of the footage, right? Yeah. With, like, you clip being, like, almost a minute each. And they released enough trailers where it didn't give away much. Like, if you really pay attention to the trailers for Infinity War, most of it is Thanos getting, Thanos talking, Thanos, uh, you know, coming in, making his entrance, talking about his plan, has a couple Infinity Stones to get people all wild up, and then most of the trailer is them fighting. Yeah, it's in most of the, when it's them fighting, it's all of like of like four places. Or yeah, maybe not four. It's like it's all of Wakanda, all Wakanda's guardianship, yeah. as whatever they that like circle ship is, which I'm assuming is in New York. It looks like New York, but I've seen like the cloud backgrounds and stuff. Maybe it could be on another planet. Oh, um, maybe that maybe that portal maybe that circle thing is a, a dimension portal. Okay. Um. I don't know. We'll go see it tomorrow. So yeah. we'll find out. Um, but you know what I mean with the secrecy, though? Yeah. I mean, he, he has a problem with secrecy. And it's like, if you're going to promote this movie, at least come out and say a couple things about the movie. Don't just fucking, here's a Super Bowl trailer. Oh, by the way, it's going to be released after the Super Bowl. It's like. Yeah. But I did like that. I did like that, too. <laughs> I, we were, because I know we were extremely excited for that trailer, especially at the Super Bowl. And it finally came out and it dropped. And then it was like, coming really soon. And then it's just like, what does really soon mean? And then we went on Netflix. It's coming right after the big game. And I was yeah. just like, holy shit. Yeah. But they, they just need to do better on promotional. That's all I'm saying. Like, if you're going to promote a movie, just do better on it. Um, but the best thing I feel like about Netflix, though, is you can't really lose because I think they only count on views. You're only paying... You're paying a... I think it's like 13 bucks a month now. Yeah. You're paying a 13 buck, bucks a month subscription. And that's what it basically is. Yeah. Because uh, when they did, uh, how they determine if they're going to get renew a show or not is by viewership. Uh-huh. Oh. Um, I think opening weekend or something like that, Stranger Things made like 5 million views or something like that. Oh. So yeah. Um, and that's how they renew all the Marvel shows. Because the Marvel shows, when those come on, uh, servers crash and shit. Yeah. You remember when we watched Daredevil season one, the server like went down for like, a good 10 minutes yeah, that kind of pissed we me couldn't off. watch it yeah because yeah. we kept refreshing it and stuff and i think that's the same thing uh that's how they determine everything i don't know how i think that that's what happened with cloverfield is like it got really like a lot of people watched it and that was a good thing but like you said the reviews were mixed back and forth because i remember me and you actually were sitting down reading a lot of the reviews and a lot of them were bad and a lot of them were good no one can make up their mind about this movie yeah it was like <laughs> It was like a Last Jedi type of thing because it was like 50% were like, this is the worst Star Wars movie ever. And then the other 50% were like, well, I wouldn't say, I would say maybe like, there were, because there was a middle ground of people who were like, eh, it was all right, I yeah. guess. But like, there were a lot of people that were like, this is Hux, just don't watch this movie. And there were people who were like, this is fantastic. Watch I, was, I was on the don't watch this movie list. You were on the watch yeah, this movie. Yeah, like that That <laughs> exactly explains it. Like, we're literally two people that were like, yeah, yeah you know, different um, opinions. Uh, we'll find out, though. Overlord yeah. is supposed to set... I, I heard it's supposed to come out this year. Mm-hmm. We still haven't gotten no trailers or anything yet. Hopefully a Comic-Con, maybe something. Yeah, I don't doubt something it. Something at least, you know? I mean, don't fucking... Tell us an hour before the movie drops. Like, oh, here it is. Here's the trailer. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, in an hour it's going to be up. Um, all right. Moving on. Platinum Dunes. They're a f- pretty famous uh, company. They've made a lot of movies, and we've talked about them before on the podcast. Um, they're going to remake the Monster Squad movie. I fucking love the Monster Squad. Monster Squad and a movie called Near Dark. Um, should be pretty good. I don't know. Yeah. Um, have, you ever, if you have, have you seen the original Monster Squad? I have. Oh, my I have. I, I really enjoyed it, and it's funny. When I talk about it with people, they have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah, I didn't know that was such an obscure movie. I think it was a cult classic. Yeah. But um, it's fucking amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I'm really excited because um, the original Monster Squad, it was it was scary, but it was also funny. Yeah. Um, and I did like how they brought all the universal monsters, like mm-hmm. Dracula, Frankenstein, the creature from the Black Lagoon, the mummy, 
they all came together and then they had a group of kids almost like the goonies who came yeah. together and they fought the monsters and stuff like that and i think they had like someone paranormal on their side too they had frankenstein frankenstein yeah um so that was cool i haven't seen that movie in a long time i've only seen it one time but um because i remember you and my dad were talking about it one night and i was like fuck i gotta watch this movie it sounds yeah. good and i finally sat down and watched it um i'm probably gonna revisit it pretty soon too because uh i am curious to see as to uh how they're going to do this remake. I don't know when it's supposed to be released. Uh, Platinum Dunes just recently announced it, that they're going to be remaking it and stuff, so that should be pretty good. Um, only time will tell, though, right? Yeah. We're going to do this week on Crypt TV. Um, I'm going to be honest. I didn't watch uh, anything this week, um, only because I've been... Busy. Kind of busy, yeah. yeah. Um, we've been hopping around comic book stores. We... We've been kind of pretty much preparing for Infinity War this week. Let's yeah. just say that. Yeah, and we've been... Well, at least you will. Well, I, I have, too. Um, I've been staying off of uh, internet. Because yeah. you... Like, every time you log on YouTube, you get... There's a bunch of bootleg Infinity War clips. Yeah, that and so I was getting pissed off at that. Um, and I've kind of been avoiding the internet a little bit all this week. I mean, I go on Instagram. That's about it. But I'm trying to still avoid that. Uh, today was actually kind of a tough day to get by. I'm yeah. glad the day's almost over, too. So, um, But I'm just going to pick one, and we'll watch it. Um... Looks like they're doing some animated stuff now. But, oh. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to pick one that looks pretty good. This one's called Night Terrorizer. We'll watch it live on the thing. Um, so, yeah. This one's called Night Terrorizer. Holy shit, you can see Oh, that's cool. short yeah. we got right to the detail so yeah she was she was asleep and uh she kept tossing and turning waking up then um she sees this woman look i look, think it was her it was her right yeah, it was her but uh she was switching as she stabbed her multiple times they cut back to her she wears a different mask and i, I did like that editing that was really good editing um and then she wakes up and it's daytime and then she realizes it's not a dream. Mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, at first I thought she was going to wake up and she it was kind of like she was already dead and this is kind of like her, not paradise, but this is her hell. Yeah. So that was cool. Um, yeah, Crypt TV does an amazing job. You know what I would like to see one year? A Crypt TV like scare zone or maze. Yeah, I'd like that. It they can get like a mashup. Yeah, like their best series like uh, Look See, um, Sunny Family Cult, uh, you just like their best ones and just yeah. bring them on that that one series about the witch mm -hmm. that possesses the girl that would be pretty cool it would just uh, it'd be an awesome mashup Murdy uh, Mr. I know uh, you're watching John Mr. Eli Roth Crypt TV if you guys are listening uh, can we can we work on a mashup uh, for Maze uh, at Halloween Horror Nights that'd be awesome thank you <laughs> now we're gonna move on to subtopics these are topics that caught our attention and they didn't, they didn't make the, the main slate of topics uh, but we're still gonna talk about them because they are relevant so uh, we talked about Jurassic World Fall Kingdom earlier how they showed the first five minutes uh, another thing I found interesting is they're gonna use way more practical effects in this version in this second movie than they did in the first one in the first Jurassic World or yeah, the first Jurassic okay. World. I thought you were talking about the first like Jurassic Park um, and that was cool because um, more practical effects gives the actors more of a uh, like better acting yeah they get to actually see what they're looking at 
Um, I know a perfect example of, of, of green screen acting is uh, Tom Holland. Tom Holland and, and a lot of um, cast from Marvel's previous though, like It's really hard to kind of act because you don't know what you're looking at. Yeah. And when we see the final cut of the movie, we're just shocked. Yeah. So like... Um, I, I could see how it, it would be hard, especially with a dinosaur movie. Yeah. Because you got to pretend like there's a freaking 50 foot dinosaur right there when like there's nothing there, you yeah. know, and they just add it in after uh, after the movie's done. But um, I, I want to say one of the the um, practical effects used in the movie is where they actually showed, I think, a clipper in the trailer is of Chris Pratt near the Tyrannosaurus Rex in the cage. Yeah. I would say that's an actual practical T Rex. I think you're right. I think it, it is practical and up until the part where... It actually starts to go bers- yeah. berserk, yeah. Um, and that's cool because that gives the actor kind of a a more feel for what he's near, you know, yeah. what, and to prepare for the scene, which is cool. So I think that's cool. Uh, props out to uh, Universal for fucking giving us more Jurassic Park. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And fucking, yeah. Goosebumps. They uh, are making a new one. I'm hoping Jack Black comes back. I haven't heard any news of Jack Black coming back, but they did release the title of the new one, mm-hmm. and it is called Goosebumps Haunted Halloween. Um, I thought they were supposed to be doing a Slappy. Oh. Yeah, Slappy oh, is, is actually this this? Slappy is the one who announced the title. Oh. Yeah, there's a little teaser that uh, Slappy comes out and announces the title. It's called uh, Haunted Halloween. Um, I I love Goosebumps. I yeah, grew up I reading that it. shit, yeah. dude. And that was like my Stephen King at the time. I've mentioned that numerous times on the podcast. Um, I, I did like the one that they did with Jack Black. That was pretty good. Yeah, I loved it. I went to the theater to see it. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. Um, I did like two. Uh, there's one scene in particular where they show all the books in just one little scene. Yeah. The car, Slappy. They just, all the monsters in the swamp. It was just so, like, Easter egg filled. I, I loved yeah. it. Nostalgic. Yeah, so uh, Slappy is one of the most famous uh, Goosebumps tales. Uh, Slappy the the, uh, the puppet. Uh, he's got, I think, three or four books in total of uh, his trilogy or his uh, saga. Um, so yeah, hopefully it's good. Um, you can do a lot with Slappy. He's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like the Chucky of the Goosebumps uh, Mm -hmm. series. So yeah. Um, Dark Souls getting remastered. I haven't played the first one. Don't. It sucks? No, it's very good, but it's like fucking hard. Is it really? It's fucking hard. Even if you play like on the easiest difficulty? It's There's no, I don't think there's a difficulty. I'm not sure. It just goes? I think so. I'm not sure. I... Don't. If you guys don't know, George does this thing on, on when he when he gets frustrated where he goes and he just goes silent for a little bit. If you guys are in the studio and you guys see it, it's the funniest shit ever. Dark Souls is fucking hard, <laughs> dude. Like it, I I I I like playing games on hard difficulty. Have you played the game fully or no? Not fully. I've gotten like I I want to do I I really want to play it. If I ever get a PC, I'll, pro- I'll probably play it on that. But we hell. got it free for Xbox, didn't we? Yeah. One time. Yeah. It's fucking hard. Dude. Yeah, and uh, there's a lot of there's a big fan base over Dark Souls too. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's getting remastered mostly because they're they're gonna put it on the Switch too. Yeah. So they're gonna remaster it for all the consoles. On top of that, put it on the Switch. I heard the remaster looks very poopy. It like, looks very what? Poopy. Doesn't look good. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's a remaster. It's, it's a remaster. Good. Yeah, and then I'm gonna be honest. Except Breath of the Wild, which looks fantastic on the Switch and any Mario game. It's really... Because I was looking at footage for Outlast on the Switch, and it looked very, like, almost pixelated. Really? A little bit, wow, yeah. that sucks. And I think Doom looks pretty good. I haven't seen footage for Doom. I've seen Doom a little bit, too, and it looks almost the same. I fucking love it. Unless that. it was just the video quality I was watching. Yeah, Doom's great. We played the album the other night at the party, <laughs> yeah, and you just right. started going ape shit. Yeah, um, I fucking love that game. I beat that game, like, back-to-back. Like, I, three I times still haven't wrong. beat it. And I you think the only, re- the only reason I didn't beat it is because I was in the room when you beat it, and so I saw the ending, and I was just like, oh, okay, well. Oh, I'm, really? I really uh, don't have no desire. I sold it, so I'll probably get it oh, back. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'll, yeah. I, I'll get it back. On the, I'll buy it back. Oh, Metal Gear Solid's going to be free for... Yeah, like, Phantom Pain. Yeah, I just want to get that. We're going to off topic. We're going to move on, though. So, uh, Netflix May 2018 horror films. It's funny, because when this podcast comes out, it's going to be May 1st. So, that's perfect timing. Oh! As of today, you can watch uh, Hellboy 2 The Golden Army. I fucking love it. I love Sc- Hellboy. Scream 2 and The Reaping. On May 4th, check out uh, Anon, Endgame, Kong King of the Apes Season 2, uh, The Rain Season 1, and Cargo. Cargo is with, uh, whatchamacallit, um, from Black Panther. 
Oh, dude! I want to fucking... That's the movie where he has to... Um, Martin Freeman, he has yeah. to smuggle that kid across the border and yeah. that's a zombie apocalypse. Yeah, so that comes out May 18th. Oh, nice! So look forward to that. Uh, yeah, Netflix yeah. original horror movie. Uh... I think we've talked about that before on the podcast. Yeah, we have. Uh, I don't want to watch that trailer because I'm, I'm going to go into the movie blind. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So, I mean, I wasn't going to play it either way. I was just, okay, it was just a list that yeah. Blade Discuss and put up that I read. So that's all your horror movies you can look at. I think the two I am most looking forward to is uh, for sure Cargo. Because um, when you, yeah, Hellboy. Yeah. Uh, I don't, is Hellboy 1 on Netflix? It, it, was. it was. It was. I know that for sure. I don't know if it still is. I fucking love it. Either Hellboy. way, though, I love the second one. Honestly, a lot better. I like them both. I like them both, yeah, but I think for me the second one's better because they have more of a team in that one, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Uh, This one kind of caught my interest because I'm a huge fan of wrestling. Undertaker is getting a graphic novel and re- and it will revisit the dead man's career. Oh, really? Is it going to be like... I is it going to be like fake? I think so, but it's going to have real aspects in it. Okay. If they say it's going to revisit his career, that means they're going to go through a lot of infamous matches that he's been through. Um, like maybe little uh, phases he's gone through, segments that he's done in the past that were, were creepy. Um, when he first started, his character was like legit an Undertaker. Like they would do promos of him like building fucking caskets, wooden oh. caskets and stuff like that. He had the pallbearer, of course, where if you don't know what a pallbearer is and at a funeral, it's uh, it's a person who brings in the casket and takes them. That's, that's what we were, yes. pallbearers. Um, and then... Uh, you know, he, he was a very... To this day, I think that's the only character that can pull off that character. Yeah. Because, like, you can't pull off a gimmick like that no more. Mm-hmm. Like, he still fucking sells it. Like, he... Uh, as of this recording, today was uh, WWE's The Greatest Royal Rumble, and he was there. He performed, and it was in a... It was this morning at, like, 9 a.m. in uh, Saudi Arabia. And, um... Yeah, he performed in a casket match, and he still got to do. He's still undefeated and stuff like that. I'm looking forward to that. I'm probably going to read it, so it should be good. Uh, William Baldwin, he secretly joined the Purge series. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. I'm either. about to look up his IMDb page. Um, we have been talking on and off a little bit about this uh, new um, Purge series that they're doing. On top of that, this, this year they're coming out with a new Purge movie, um, the first Purge, which looks uh, pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, Marissa Tomain's in it. She's so beautiful, and she will be playing the woman who tries to get this thing going. Yeah. So I think that's a a pretty cool, um, that's a pretty cool uh, little concept. Oh, it's Alec Baldwin's brother. Okay, I wanted to say Literally that. Literally looks like him, dude. Yeah, I wanted to say that, but because there's Adam Baldwin who is in Chuck. And yeah, and he's not him. related to him. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he, I guess he's on the Purge series, uh, USA and Sci-Fi are working. I don't know what network's going to be on. I think it's going to be on USA. Uh, Bob will, will be playing a reoccurring role of Don Riker, the managing partner at Jane's investment firm and her boss, handsome, confident, and powerful. Don leads his team with, uh, El Chris, El, El Chris, yep. Alicrity. <laughs> <laughs> and intelligence. He appears to be a big. He he. Be, I just I just, just can't okay? read today. I am. He appears to be a big Jane supporter, but in fact, maybe standing in the way of her career advancement. Don also harbors a purge knight secret. Nice. So it looks like he's gonna be playing like kind of a secret villainous role. Okay. That's pretty cool. Um. I I'm curious about this show though, and this is my question for this show. Is it going to be one of those shows that it's days before the Purge, everything is going to fall into place leading up to the se- season finale each season of the Purge? I fucking hope not. And I, some part of me, I don't know. I don't, I just. I don't want a fucking TV series stretch out over one night because. Yeah, I just, I, I just don't know how you can do a TV series with one night. Like how much stuff can go on in one night? Like if you watch The Strain, it's a, it's a pretty okay show. But, like, the first season, I believe, takes place over one night. It's and it's not. like, dude, they get fucked up yeah. in, like, one night. Like, yeah. wow. Um, Yeah, with the Purge series, that's what I'm hoping. It, it kind of it, it kind of sets stuff up, and then it's the Purge, you yeah. know? And if you're going to do the Purge, maybe three or two episodes the most. Don't go, like, a whole season. Yeah. I don't know. They could do, like, beginning, leading up to it, middle, the purge and then post purge the aftermath of people like that could be good yeah that could be really good because post purge you don't see that a lot in the movies 
Um, you do hear like articles and news. It's like the purge is over. This is what happened. Purge was a success. The yeah, purge. another it's success so of a purge. Um, and you know, I was even skeptical when they announced they were going to be making another purge movie because the way the third one ended, it kind of just ended the purge period. Yeah. Um, spoilers, and if you haven't seen it by now, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> it's been out for like a year or two already, but. Uh, when they announced that this was the first Purge, okay, I, I caught some interest in it because now I kind of want to see, from what the trailer's given us, it shows that, okay, people didn't want to participate in this, and so what Marissa Tomei and the government are doing is sending ex-soldiers out. Oh, yeah. And they're trying That's to... That's what I want to talk about. They shouldn't have done that. They should not have put that in the fucking trailer. Oh, because it gives it away? Yeah, like, they shouldn't have done that. What like, was the movie that you, you you complained a lot to that gave away the whole plot? Which, take um, your fucking pick, Amazing because Spider-Man there's a 2. lot. Amazing Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 2 could be it. Um, the fucking Terminator franchise. Fucking, and, uh... Oh, Ter- yeah, it was Terminator, because Terminator, Genesis. Genesis. Yeah, Terminator Genesis shows that fucking John Connor's a Terminator. Yeah. Why? <laughs> and then fucking Terminator Salvation gives away that Sam Worthington's a fucking Terminator. <laughs> What? It, it's such a fucking pain in the ass, dude. There's that. There's fucking, um, there's a, um, a movie Michael Bay did called The Island. And it, it, the movie is about uh, these, like, rich guys. They make clones of themselves. So yeah. if they get organ failure, they could take the clone, fucking cut them open, take the shit, and they'll be fine because yeah. it's a genetic clone. And in the fucking trailer... It, they make it look like, oh, um, it, it's like a lottery. Like, they live in a utopia, and uh, if you win the lottery, you'll get transported out, and you'll get put on an island, and it's, like, supposed to be, like, a beautiful, like, vacation. And in the fucking trailer, they fucking say, uh, Steve Buscemi's like, oh, you're not, it's not an island. You're a clone, you idiot. And, like, <laughs> it, like why would you say that, And dude? so, yeah, with the first Purge, they kind of, now I'm kind of seeing where Christ. you're going with this. Yeah, the first por- Purge. The first purge did give it away of how they are the government's behind it all. I wish they would have kind of kept that a secret and just showed. You could have honestly showed the government guys killing people and oh, like man. no one would have suspected it. No yeah. one would have been like, "Oh, it's just them purging." Yeah. But now they just, "Oh, we're uh, gonna send people out and uh, they're gonna kill people and uh, yeah." <clears throat> I'm really mad right now. <laughs> yeah. You bringing up Terminator that kind of made me mad. <laughs> let's uh, let's make you even more mad then, Jason Statham. Talks potential f- shit. potential franchise for the Meg. Um. Okay. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. No. L- let me start this real quick. I'm actually looking forward to this movie. I. I don't like a lot of shark movies, but this is a giant shark, and this looks like it's gotten at least. You sound some- like your fucking dad. This looks like it's gotten at least some money put into it. No. I bet you it's gonna be better than Deep Blue Sea too. It probably will. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna fucking find out because I won't <laughs> watch it. I am looking forward to it. I just want to see a giant shark. Um, the promotional has been cool for. I don't know if you saw the end of the trailer. I don't I even did. know if you watched. I watched the trailer. the trailer when he's coming up and he's about. And to you know, actually, I watched the trailer like four in the morning, and I, I, I kept looking at that part because it scared the shit out of me. I was like, "That's fucking." Nervous. They look cool, though, and I don't they? like the ocean. I already don't like it, and I skipped too far, and there is a jump scare of a shark coming towards my ah! phone, and it scared me. So I, um, <laughs> I was like, "I'm fucking going to bed." I don't know about a franchise though. Rain, yeah, I hope not. Rain Wilson's gonna be in it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Dwight has his career really come to this point? I don't think it's that. It's, he's like, oh, Jason Statham, I'll just fucking do that. Unless he thought it's probably gonna be an actual good movie, you know? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I think it's gonna be. It won't be the best movie, but it'll be all right. It'll be watchable. Yeah. Hopefully, it doesn't take itself too seriously. If it doesn't take itself too seriously, then I just don't want a, an unnecessary sequel. It's not worth it. Yeah. But uh, who knows? Um, okay, so a lot of people have been rumor. There's been rumors a lot lately of uh, Lauren Cohen. She's apparently they think that she's gonna be leaving The Walking Dead. You guys are fucking idiots. She's not leaving The Walking Dead. She's come back for another. She's come back for another season, season nine. Um, do you mind if I spoil it? I don't. Think I don't care. care. I'm done. Yeah. The um, for those of you guys who don't want to hear, not caught up. This is uh, full spoilers for the uh, was it season eight? Season sure. eight, season eight <laughs> uh, ending or I'm just gonna say the latest season that just ended. Um, so yeah, uh, so basically what happens at the end is after the war, they go back to Hilltop. Maggie's talking to, uh, Maggie's talking to someone. It is revealed that's Michonne. Mm-hmm. They're talking about how, cause Rick let Negan live. Yes. And, uh, they're trying to, they're trying to rebuild society like this should be. How people should get locked up for their crimes. They're trying to rebuild society in a way. Mm-hmm. They're trying to bring you know they're trying to make it normal again they're trying to bring justice yeah. to the system uh so yeah they're all gonna 
they you know they after what they did in Negan they they got together with the saviors and they started trading resources and stuff like that so everybody's cool now Maggie comes up and says something she's kind of going her character's kind of going a little bit more governor type and she came out and said I don't like what Rick's doing pretty much and he needs to be stopped she's <laughs> talking to Michonne and Michonne agrees <laughs> He's doing good things. He can't do that. And then fucking uh, Daryl comes out and then agrees. <laughs> oh, Jesus. No, no, no. She's not talking to Michonne. He's talking to Jesus. <laughs> oh, okay. I, yeah. I was just thinking like... <laughs> no, because yeah, Michonne, Michonne is with <laughs> uh, Rick on this. But uh, I just thought it was fucking like... Really? They're, so basically next season it looks like they're going to try to overthrow Rick. I don't like that. I don't know. I have not caught up in the comics yet. I'm, I'm on uh, like number... 12 i think so i can't really say much where i'm at right now i think they just reached alexandria okay so i'm still quite some ways until i catch up i could probably catch up by the time the season starts again maybe i don't know um but yeah so yeah guys lauren cohen is not leaving she came out confirmed that she is returning for the next season of walking dead as maggie so look forward to that uh next thing we're gonna talk about stephen king he has a book called the long walk and it's getting a film adaption from new line cinema the same people who released the it movie of course them okay. and warner brothers um i think i think warner brothers i think yeah warner brothers owns new line mm -hmm. so um it looks like warner brothers is picking up the majority of uh stephen king's projects and smart yeah i mean they killed it with it yeah so that was cool um i don't know too much about the long walk i don't either i'm gonna look it up so uh i th I, w I hope it's horror what? um what happened oh i was reading something about god of war oh um, I hope it's horror though, um, because uh, if it's not, then I'm gonna feel like a fucking idiot for putting it on this list. It's Stephen King. Either way, you can get away with it, Stephen King. Yeah, but Stephen King did fucking Stand by Me, and that wasn't horror. Yep, but I think that took place in Maine. Yeah, it took place in Derry, Maine. All his movies take place in Derry, Maine. Yeah, even his love story shit, and that's because that's just the place he grew up in. But I feel, what is it? Psychological horror, dystopia. Oh, okay. So it's Set like, in a future dystopian America ruled by a militaristic dictator, the plot revolves around the uh, the contestants of a grueling walking contest held annually by the totalitarian in, in I'm you and I can't speak. Yeah. Uh the totalitarian version of the United States of America. In 2000 the American Library Association that's just <laughs> that was just like a reward. Um 100 teenage boys participate in an annual walking contest called the Long Walk or just the Walk. Each contestant, called a walker, naturally, must maintain a speed of at least 4 miles per hour. If he drops below that speed for 30 seconds, he receives a verbal warning. A walker who slows down after receiving three warnings is ticketed. The meaning of this action is intentionally kept vague at first, but okay, I'm just going to stop. Fucking it. 4 miles an hour? That's running, dude. You can just ticket me. I'm not doing that. <laughs> We walk okay. at a fucking speed of one. I'm just going to stop right there because I was assuming they were going to say what it was. And if they're going to adapt it, then, you know. Yeah. That's fucking four miles. That's running, dude. I'm not doing yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, they're dictators. They're going to fucking... I'm like, you know what? Fuck Pop you, dude. You. I'm going to die with dignity. <laughs> I'm going to die and I won't run. I'm going to give him the finger and then, eat, you know, stop. Die. <laughs> um, That should be pretty good. That actually kind of sounds interesting, though. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see that. Yeah. It's supposed to be like a different kind of alternate reality. Does it say it taking place in Derry, Maine? I think well, I, I think I said Los Angeles, did I? Okay. I, I think California. I said. Either way, I'll watch it. Um, this one's pretty cool. Um, you've probably seen how successful Rampage has been doing lately. <laughs> um, I guess the Rampage mocap actor, he's going to be playing uh, King Ghidorah in the new Godzilla King of Monsters movie. Nice. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm assuming the one they're talking about is the guy who played George. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's cool because I do like Godzilla. Yeah. And the new the new one, okay. Not a lot of people like the new one. I fucking love the new one. Yeah, I, and a lot of people like him because the way that the way Godzilla looks. Yeah. It's um, fat. Big boy. I I liked it. I don't care. I liked it. I, I liked, liked it. Kong Skull Island. Yeah, I love the director Gareth Gareth Edwards. Yeah. He did a uh, Rogue One. I liked Kong Skull yeah. Island. That was good. I loved Kong Skull. Yeah, Island too. that was good. And I'm um, really looking forward. To, so I guess they're gonna do another Godzilla, and then they're gonna do Godzilla vs King Kong. Yeah. You know what's funny too? Because in Godzilla, uh, Elizabeth Olsen and Aaron Taylor Johnson they play husband and wife, and, and they then play sister. And then, yeah, and Age of Ultron. They play brothers. I was, you know, I I, I was gonna bring that up to you the other day because yeah. I was watching Age of Ultron. <laughs> but like, yeah, my friend when I when that movie first came out, my friend goes, "Yeah, didn't you notice that uh, 
the guys who play uh, Wanda and and, and uh, what's Pietro? his Pietro Maximoff. Yeah, they're brother and sister in there, but in Godzilla, they're husband and wife. I'm like, ew. Yeah, that's gross. <laughs> cool. uh, but that you know, they're still great actors. They must be really like yeah. good friends then, because if they did that. Yeah, you know it's funny too because uh, it, it, it King Ghidorah and King of Monsters. <laughs> um, O'Shea Jackson Jr. I keep son because he's he's in is the he movie. gonna be in that yeah movie? I think he's in the movie I don't know who he's gonna play but he was like I think in an interview he was like yeah the fight's a sight to behold and I was like how the fuck did you see it <laughs> like I know you're part of the movie but I don't think you walked into the booth probably and... read the script and I was yeah like, this sounds good yeah probably I mean <laughs> like I think Mothra is supposed to be in here too yeah I think so too because in the Godzilla or the King Kong post credit scene they you know they, they show showed and they show, yeah King Ghidorah and then all the and then you hear Godzilla's roar which gave me goosebumps yeah. so I was like oh. Cause I remember I had never watched it, and you watched it. You're like, dude, watch this post credit yeah. scene. So I was like, oh, this is gonna be good. Um, I'm curious. It is the '60s. I don't know. I don't think Tom Hiddleston will return. Wait, what is is Godzilla supposed to be in? The- no, 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 no. I'm talking about King Kong. Okay. Um, but if 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 by some reason Brie Larson and uh. Uh, Tom Hiddleston's character do return. They're probably gonna be a lot older. I think if they're gonna return, because uh, they talked to oh sorry, no, good. um, they talked to him about uh, at the end of the movie. I think they start Monarch again, and I think maybe they would be uh, um consultants if they're not dead. It's it would be very easy to kill them off. Yeah, if they don't want to come back. Um, they get, I mean, well, by the time they show them again, though, they'll be older. Yeah, they'll probably be in like that was in Vietnam, and they look like they're in their early thirties, late twenties. Mm-hmm. So they'll probably be in their fucking easily 60s, 70s by the time Godzilla versus King Kong or just the Godzilla movie comes out. Um, I do. I I've always loved. I think out of all the villains though, for uh, Godzilla, King Ghidorah has always been my favorite. Mm-hmm. Dragon dude. So yeah. You can't get three heads. The yeah. Mothra it should be pretty cool. Yeah. If he's gonna fight both of them, that should be a pretty good little triple mm-hmm. threat match. Unless they do a two on one tag team on him. Hmm. But, uh, I don't know if you've seen the first. I mean, Godzilla, he fought two Mutos and then yeah. he fucked them both up. Yeah, he did. I just want to see more of that fucking nuclear breath. We didn't get to let, see a lot of that in the yeah. first one, which hope they s- just abuse it in the next one. But uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, motion cap guy who played George is going to be King Ghidorah. That's me. Yeah. I'm going to play King Ghidorah. Yes, you are. Confirmed here, ladies and gentlemen. Confirmed first, exclusively on the Mindless War podcast. Um, all right, Gilmore Del Toro. He is bringing one of my favorite childhood books to life, and it's gotten so. There's a while. So there's this book, uh, "Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark," one of the best books I've ever read. Uh, in when I was in elementary school, it was basically creepy pasta before creepy pasta. Nice. Um, I don't know if you you never read them, huh? No. I'm probably gonna have to order them just because I want to read them again. But legitimately, they were honestly kids, maybe teenage books, um. And they were honestly some scary stories, dude. There were some like legit twisted stories in there. And um, Guillermo del Toro liked the book so much he wanted to uh, make them into a movie. Mm-hmm. So what had happened was, um, I guess he, you know, he came out and said we're gonna make this movie, and then it kind of went in the dark for a little bit. Well, there's good news. It's found its light again. Nice. So I, apparently, I guess it's in the works again. Uh, I'm I'm really excited because I, I like I said I really like these books I'll probably buy them so you can read them mm-hmm. and because I, I want to reread them too but uh there I think there was like three or four of them there were scary stories to tell in the dark uh, more scary stories to tell in the dark and even more scary stories to tell in the dark um they were such they had they were they were famous for their iconic covers too uh the the art was just honestly like it was like a it was like kind of like a, a like a stencil faded art yeah but it it was so like weird that it made it look scary mm-hmm. so it was cool um. But yeah, I'm gonna go right now. Actually, after we're done with the podcast on Amazon, look them up, see if they're available, and get them. But yeah, so hopefully we see that pretty soon. Last thing we're gonna talk about on the podcast before we get to this week in YouTube is third Annabelle movie is next in the Conjuring series after the Nun. I wonder what they're gonna do with that because Annabelle two wraps up. It like fucking continue. Oh, then again, they could because she joined the Charles Manson's cult, and, and they could not just do Annabelle stuff too. Like- you haven't seen Annabelle 2? And now you just said that. Now I'm interested in seeing Annabelle 2. What? You've never seen Annabelle 2? I saw the first one. I, I really what? I enjoyed the first one. Wow, dude. Annabelle 2 is Probably watch good. it tonight then. Yeah, we can watch it tonight. Um, Annabelle 2 is really, really good. No, I heard it was great. I, it wasn't like something I was trying to avoid. Like, this is terrible. I'm not going to watch it. Yeah. Like, I really wanted to watch it. I just, I never found the time to do wow. it. I never could. Like, even when I was fucking here alone, I never just thought about, yeah. hey, maybe I'll watch Annabelle 2. Like they I said, the demon a lot in like I said, dude, this week I've just been on a Marvel binge. Yeah. Like, oh, and yeah, I've, I and I've been sewing and, 
and reading comics, dude. I've just been on a binge lately. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm always down to watch it, obviously, too. Um, they showed the demon a lot, a pretty good amount, too. Oh, yeah, they showed a nun, the nun poster, too. Yes. Good thing you brought that up. I almost forgot about it. Yeah. They showed a, an eerie, creepy nun poster. It yeah. looks pretty good. Um, speaking of the Conjuring universe, uh, we should be getting a trailer for that anytime now. Yeah, I'm going to say Comic-Con. I'm going to say... say if Comic-Con or something I'm gonna say coming uh, soon. Yeah, Comic-Con, if not something coming soon, because I think Blumhouse is going to release maybe the Halloween and the Nun trailer at the same time. Hey, you guys want both trailers? Boom! There yeah. you go. <laughs> Boom, you're looking for this? Or they're, <laughs> they're going to give the Nun trailer first and then Halloween. <laughs> That's a good meme right there. Or they <laughs> could do, because Comic-Con is two, like three days, so they could do like yeah. Saturday... Well, unless they want, if they have one day. panel, though. I mean, I don't know if they're going to do a panel or they, they just, oh, here's one day and here's another day. But, yeah, you're yeah. right. That's a good meme, the fucking kid. More machine. Boom. Mm-hmm. You're looking for this? <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, uh, third film of the Annabelle. I guess Annabelle's a pretty famous series in The Conjuring. Uh, I wouldn't say Annabelle creation. Is Annabelle creation based on a true story? No. Okay, because I know originally um, Annabelle is based on a true story. Mm-hmm. I don't know if... The- I think the doll is based on a true story. I don't think the movie is. What about I, the first one? Yeah, that yeah, that's the what I mean. First one, I don't think it's based on a true story. Um, I think they the use doll real is, aspects, yeah. but they don't think they because the doll does look story. nothing like that. Yeah, and I, and I remember in the first Annabelle, they did a little Easter egg on the shelf. You can see the actual doll, like yeah. at the very end of the movie when she's purchasing the doll. So we'll see. Uh, all right, we're gonna wrap up this podcast. Uh, sorry for being so short on George's return. There wasn't a lot of news um, this week, at least. And I kind of had to mash up some news from like a couple weeks ago and stuff like that. So, Are you sure? How long was this podcast? Uh, an hour and one. We usually go like an oh, hour. Oh, really? We usually go like it an felt hour. like three, dude. Oh, really? It, yeah, it, well, it felt like it was long for me. Because we usually only go like an hour 20, hour 30. Yeah. So. Wowzers. Um, I'm, I'm just looking on the list for this week. And you just, SoCal Exploring. Uh, this guy has honestly become my best friend, dude. Scott is just great. Yeah, he's your best friend. We, uh. Uh, you're my best friend. You know. Oh, it. thank you. Uh, you're too kind. But uh, no, uh, we watched the the greatest Royal Rumble this morning. We skyped that shit. We were oh, watching. did you really? Oh, yeah, I skyped cool. him. And he's a I, he's a huge wrestling fan. I didn't know that. Oh, that's cool. So yeah. Um, but this week on his channel, he did a Pixar Pier construction update. Pretty good if you guys are interested in uh, Disney. Uh, I, I know I am. Yeah. Uh, Paint the Night Parade 2018, the full parade. That was pretty cool. Um, I've been wanting to see that parade. And Pixar Fest 2018 at Disneyland Resort, a vlog. He just put that up an hour ago, so go check that out. Well, at least in this recording he did. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, next on the list, we are going to be talking about Ark with Our uh, The last podcast we actually did on this channel, he was on it. So, The Purge returning to HS in 2018, question mark, maybe. Uh, as Maybe not... Uh, Maybe a little scare zone of some sort. I don't know. And the new Michael Myers mask and the nun poster. Horfix, his series Horfix. They talk anything, horror news and stuff like that. So definitely go check out his channel for that. Next on our list is Zombie Chris. Zombie Chris is our uh, need-to-know guy in Orlando for anything Orlando HHN. We love that guy. He does some good uh, stuff. He put up an Ash vs. Evil Dead canceled video, sadly. Uh, Venom trailer reaction, Bruce Campbell retiring Ash character, and HHN28 Dead Exposure Patient Zero announced. They just announced a new maze uh, yesterday out of the bloom. Oh, okay. Uh, it was called uh, Expo- Dead Exposure Patient Zero, and it's supposed to be in the 80s of the zombie apocalypse. Oh, it's their, cool. It's their, because I, I think at, at uh, HHN Orlando, they do uh, two or three, maybe four original mazes mm-hmm. that they come up with. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Crypt TV. This week they did, um, of course, the one we talked about, Night Terrorizer. Uh, they're doing a thing right now. Submit your scary short on Crypt TV. Ooh. If I can get a, a good camera and a film crew together, I would love to submit yeah, that'd Twisted be awesome. Tales. I would love to submit Twisted Tales. If not, I would like to have someone buy the script for me and then just give me writing credit and then bring it to life and if they have to do like rewrites or something just bring the movie just bring the thing twisted tales honestly has been in the works for so like i've done with the first season mm-hmm. it's just finding people to actually do it it's like it, it's a pain and i i you know me i really want to be a filmmaker yeah or it's just something in the film business and that's one of my passions is to kind of just create something that i can look back at and like oh yeah i did that yeah so hopefully one day um they did another they're starting to do like animation and stuff like that uh they did one called happy meal horror Oh. Dark Vessel and Zombie Pet. So, Crypt TV each week gives us free amazing horror. Uh, go check them out. They are just amazing. Um, I haven't put up new videos yet. Oh, actually, as of this recording, there will be two videos up. But, yeah, 
definitely go check out my new channel, Anthony Zaragoza. It's got a Punisher logo as the picture, and uh, link will be in the description below to subscribe uh, if you want to see more of my life or something like that. Um, next thing we're going to talk about is I'm going to add one to the list because uh, I actually started getting into his videos because of you. Dead Meat. Oh. Yeah. Um, so this week he did uh, Where's the Saw Kill Count. Then he did a Saw Kill Count. Oh, uh, yeah. Where's the Saw Kill Count? Um, Friday, today, this is when we're recording it, he released the Saw, the Saw 2, 2 Kill, kill count. count. Yeah. Um, where's the Saw 2 Kill Count is about him talking about how YouTube uh, yeah, is I, fucking dumb. I've been seeing that lately because like he's been doing Kill Count for years. And like YouTube's barely giving him shit about it because of the new the new things. Thanks to um, Logan Paul. Thanks a lot, Logan Paul. I think it's been before, but a lot of people were mad because Logan Paul. No, Logan Paul made it worse. Uh, um, it. Yeah, he's the reason why. Now, originally, all I had to do was get to a hundred subscribers, and I could monetize all my videos. He's the reason I can't do that now. I have to get to I have to get to a certain amount of uh, hours watched and a certain amount of views and stuff like that. Thanks, Logan Paul. My sister likes Logan Paul too. I know she does. <laughs> uh, let's get the numbers. Supercut, Dead Meat Year One, yeah. and Annabelle Dead Meat Podcast Number Eight. He does a podcast. Yes, he does. I might have to start listening. And they're only they're only eight in, so I'll probably start listening yeah. to it. Another horror podcast that I can add to my uh, list. Um, of course, Mindless Horse first though, dude. Yeah. Dead Meat's obviously close second. Yeah. Um, no disrespect to Dead Meat. I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, his um, well. I'm not going to... He didn't post any videos, but I'm just going to put this out there in an announcement. Theme Park Info is no more named Theme Park Info. Oh. He's going under the name Xander Larson now, which is his real name, which okay. I think that's what actually... One of the... Way, uh, that's actually one of the inspirations for the new Anthony Zaragoza channel. Uh, it's one of those uh, do what I can, anything and everything, you know? Mm -hmm. So... Second star, Thomas from TLAV. Nice. Yeah, he put up, uh, Expedition Everest has always been broken. Oh. Exclamation point with... Uh, question mark um and yeah and that is it okay so thanks everyone for listening to the mindless horror podcast uh if you guys want to continue listening to another podcast check out the new uh podcast from the same guys who brought you the old one mindless horror Shit. nerd fan base podcast if you guys uh couldn't hear right now george just dropped a paintbrush and I he yelled shit too. and almost fell that was, that was awesome almost kind of funny too <laughs> um but yeah listen to the nerd fan base if you guys want to hear anything we're going to talk about anything from comics to uh movies to whatever we feel like you're basically yep. on that podcast uh we have uh we have a little chat group called comic dump on instagram that we send each other comic related stuff sci-fi related stuff anything really so we'll just get our news off that um george good to have you back honestly. thank you um can we expect you next week sure yeah I mean, I guess I can drive again, yeah. so yeah. I guess we can expect you next week. Thank you guys for watching. Tune in next week because we'll have another episode of the Mindless Tour and the Nerd Fanbase podcast. I've been your host, Anthony. I'm George. And you have just listened to our podcast. Have a good night or day or wherever time zone you're in.